Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Joseph. We're so, two Magic players and we are launching our new channel on Popper Commander. So what is Popper Commander? Uh, Popper is really similar to regular Commander. It has one creature as your commander and that dictates your color restriction. And so, and that's accompanied by a deck of exactly 99 additional cards, um, which is in set in a singleton format. And what that really means is, it means that uh, apart from your basic lands, uh, every single card in your deck, you only get one copy of, which means that you have a lot of replay value. You're very likely to encounter completely different combinations of cards each time that you play your game. Yeah. So you've probably been really familiar with Commander if you're coming in on our channel right now. And so what is the difference, right? Yeah. So first of all, when it comes to Popper Commander, every single card in your 99 must be a common rarity or must have been printed at least once in common rarity over Magic's 20, 30 year history. Yeah. Um, what's the second difference? Second difference is Commander can be uncommon. So you can pick anything. It doesn't have to be legendary. It can just be a standard creature. Um, and so really what that kind of gives you is any card you can think of. So um, something. Any, yeah, so any monster that's an uncommon rarity. Um, for example, Soul Herder is a very good choice for an Azorius commander. Uh, also, any of the Guild Mage set basically will be an uncommon creature that you can use as a popper commander. Yeah, or any any of your favorite real uncommon uh, monocolor cards. You know, so Gutter Snipe is something that's really huge uh, that can have a really strong impact on the deck. So why would we want to play popper commander instead of just regular commander, which most of us are more used to? Yeah. And especially, you know, you see all these other deck techs, uh, EDH, Rack, uh, you know, very easy examples. You know, our biggest point is price, right? Price, price, price. So um, a normal commander deck will run you, at least the ones that I build that are fairly competitive, um, run you about $100, give or take. But a very che a cheap commander deck a cheap one, and these are including the ones that Mitch does on Commander's Quarters, are still probably like 30 to $40. Yeah, which can be functional, but you're really picking a very narrow range of good commanders that can rely on, on weak spells, right, to, to compete with those $100 plus decks. You know, most people probably going up to two, 300 bucks to get something that's functional. And if you want to look at competitive decks, like really competitive, you're probably looking at $400 plus just to get those super rare cards. Whereas Popper, in comparison, for an entire deck is $10, $20 for the whole thing. And that can be cheaper than some individual commander staple cards. Yeah, and I think you, you really got to think about it too, especially if you're looking on anywhere online. There's people running 20, 30 decks just because they have variety and they've been playing for a long time. If you want that variety and you're really tight on a budget, you know, Popper is something that you can make 10 decks for a hundred bucks and you can just cycle through them. Yeah, in my personal con uh, collection, I have eight paper commander decks and I've probably spent about a hundred, two hundred dollars overall on each deck just buying new cards and swapping them out. Yeah. Uh, Popper means that I wouldn't have to have broken my bank on that. <laughs> and in terms of, of just, you know, troubleshooting a deck, you know, when you, when you first buy a deck and if you haven't play tested with anyone, Dropping a hundred bucks to, 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 to do that play testing to realize it doesn't really work the way you want it to uh, can be a real hit in the shins. Uh, so, so being able to play test going through a $10 deck is a uh, much... It's more mu forgiving. <laughs> more forgiving on the wallet. Uh, another good reason why you want to play a popper deck is because of power levels. Uh, for example, in Commander, regular Commander, it's very easy to come up to a situation where you say, I want to play my mono-white samurai tribal deck. And then the other person at the table sits down with an Urza or an Omnath Angry Jelly Bean or a Tesa Karlov. Yeah. You know, before you even start your opening hand, you're toast. Yeah, you're going to get stomped. Uh, and, and that can be really frustrating. And you know, everyone says the rule zero of, of trying to be like, okay, what kind of power level do you really have? And you see all these numbers, 1 through 10. No one has a very concrete idea of what that means, right? And in Popper, the power level is really set, you know, in terms of a glass ceiling. You know, you can dump 20, 30 bucks into a Popper deck and it's still going to function relatively similar to those $10 decks. Um, and, and everyone feels like they're playing a fair game. Um, 
every single time that Will and I have played our popper games, it has always been a razor's edge on who wins. Very few times has anyone ever gotten completely stomped, and it's just because... And that, those only happened because one of us was land starved. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and you're always going to have those kinds of issues. And it's just, in my personal opinion, playing a game where anybody could win is the most satisfying games. Um, and it all, another good thing with having the card restrictions on rarity and also having the cheap cheap ceiling is that it also prevents an arms race from occurring between players. Uh, one of my, back when we were playing regular commander, uh, one of our good friends was playing a Cranko deck or an Elf Ball deck uh, or a, a Marin deck. And we were constantly saying, oh my gosh, I have to get the newest cards that are more expensive just to try and keep up yeah otherwise it turns to an arch enemy scenario and you know that's fun one or two games but if somebody just consistently brings that you know thousand dollar deck because they have the budget for it it's really frustrating and i mean you know even if your pod plays commander you can always you know two three commander games and then you slot in a popper game um and it, it just really drops the power level so that it's a nice casual even playing field and that kind of goes to the next point where it's it's a much more relaxing game. You know, in your upkeeps, you're not going through 12 triggers. You're not watching somebody play their turn for 10 minutes while you just wait for your turn. There's no solitaire that's going to be happening. You say, I'm going to drop my 2-2 bear and do a combat step, and that's the end of your turn. Yeah, and you can really BS with your pals, and no one's missing triggers. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it really comes for a more casual, casual game. Yeah. Uh, another good thing to have is... You don't have any infinite combos where just someone is going off and bouncing between three triggers uh, for 10 minutes to get that infinite win. Uh, Which can be fun once or once in a while, but I mean, if everyone's ending the game, turn five, everyone accidentally tapped out, and then you watch somebody cycle through their infinite combo and, and sit there for a couple minutes is, I don't know, it doesn't feel as satisfying as you swing with two two bears. <laughs> <laughs> And because of that, it, like we mentioned, it is very good for new players because new players don't have as many triggers. They don't have as many things to keep up with. It's very good for casual introductory magic. Yeah. Because yeah. as we, I don't know about you, but when I started playing magic, particularly commander, there is just so much going on. Oh, it's you, you can't teach a new, new, new person unless you're making a 2-2 two -two bear deck, right? And so in... With PDH, you can really use this as a gateway for a lot of friends. And with the singleton format, there's just so much replayability and you're getting a new experience every time, even though it's simple mechanics. Right. Another reason why we really like Popper Commander is because you have a whole new set of cards. Uh, that rar rarity restriction means that you basically cut out most of your commander staples and you're not going to have any Soul Ring, you're not going to have any Smothering Tide, you're not going to have any zero mana counter spells. No. And because of that, there are so many games where you see kind of the same basic cards get shuffled into every single deck, particularly on like different commander channels. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just becomes the same deck plus 10 different cards, right? And so I think there's a whole new fresh aspect of playing PDH, especially if you're a veteran. Uh, commander player to really get a whole new angle on some of these lower powered cards that still have a really strong effect. Uh, for example, we when we were building our popper decks, we suddenly started noticing that cards that we had previously never cared about suddenly became a lot more useful. Yeah. Uh, I made a self mill deck and I found that there are a whole bunch of unearth cards that normally I would never have included, but they became really powerful and very effective in my popper deck. Yeah, and, and things such as Threshold. So uh, uh, I'll be making a, a deck tech on uh, Death, Death Bonnet. And uh, it's, um, you know, in any kind of Threshold mechanic, you always would much rather do a um, uh, Undergrowth. Uh, is it Undergrowth? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Und yeah. Und undergrowth Delirium. There's a whole bunch of card effects that care about how big your graveyard is. Yeah, and you just usually throw threshold cards by the wayside because you're either, one, not going to get to the seven cards fast enough, uh, or there's just stronger alternatives. And 
what I've what I've noticed with the threshold, at least in PDH, is it can be a really strong effect because these games last, you know, seven, eight turns at least, which gives you at least just with Death Bonnet triggering every turn, it'll hit you to threshold, and it has a strong growing effect. And similar, talking about how the games last longer, I found uh, card effects like the Thalid creatures that have the spore counters that tick up and eventually will create sapperlings. You actually have the time to take advantage of those effects now uh, because you're not going to have those turn five wins. Yeah. So overall, what is the goal of our channel? Uh, we're going to be making deck techs for popper commanders. Yeah, and, and, and this is really to get a look at some of these newer cards that, newer per se, but cards that are really unappreciated that can serve as your commanders and that are not typically mentioned and, and can really have a cool angle to making a deck. Yeah, we're also going to be working on making some playthrough videos so you can see how these popper decks work in action. Yeah, so thank you for taking a, a look at this uh, our channel. Um, please like, subscribe. Uh, we're hoping to make plenty of deck techs in the, in the near future, and you should be able to check some out down below. Yeah, we're a new channel, and we're very excited to start making content for you guys. Okay, bye. <laughs>